we're going to learn one more theorem about binomial coefficients and uh, justify why we call them binomial coefficients. But before we do that theorem, we're going to do an example that seems like it doesn't have any relevance whatsoever. Uh, we're going to expand the binomials x plus y squared and x plus y cubed. And you probably know how to do this just by foiling, but we're going to take a little bit of a longer road and try to see something. All right. So if I want to expand x plus y squared, and let's assume I don't know how to FOIL, then I'm going to do x plus y times x plus y. And I'm going to use the distributive property. So I'm going to multiply x times x. I'm going to multiply y times x. I'm going to multiply x times y. And I'm going to multiply y times y. Now, thanks to the commutative property of multiplication, both x and y are the same thing, as long as x and y are numbers. So I can just combine those two terms. All right, so I can do the same thing with x plus y cubed. x plus y times x plus y times x plus y. And I have to pay a little more attention this time because it's not quite as easy to do in my head, but basically I'm going to take each one of these factors and I'm going to pick out an x or a y and I'm going to multiply those things together and I'm going to do this in every possible way that I can. So my first term is going to be x times x times x, so that'll be x cubed. My second term I'll do x times x times y and that gives me the term x squared y. I could just as easily have done x y x or y x x. I could also have done x y y which would give me the term x y squared. I could have also done uh, y x y, and I could have also done y squared x. And then finally, I also get the term where I multiply all three y's together, and that gives me y cubed. And once again, since x squared y, x y x, and y x squared are all the same thing, I can group those terms together. So I end up getting x cubed plus 3x squared y plus uh, 3xy squared plus y cubed. All right, and so maybe you're starting to notice something here. Maybe you're starting to remember the triangle we wrote down in the last set of slides, Pascal's triangle of binomial coefficients. And you're starting to notice some similarities. And the reason for that is because as we factor out x plus y cubed, I am choosing among three factors r x's and n minus r y's. Uh, and since the order of the x's and y's doesn't matter, uh, that turns out to be three choose r terms like that. So there's three choose zero x cubes, three choose one x squared y's, uh, three choose two x y squareds, and three choose three uh, y cubed terms. All right, so this theorem is called the binomial theorem. Let x and y be any numbers, uh, including complex numbers, if you know what those are, and let n be a positive integer. Then x plus y to the nth power is the sum of n choose r times x to the r times y to the n minus r. And if that looks a little complicated, basically the only thing I'm saying is that the power on x is going up, the power on y is going down, and the coefficient is always n choose r. So here's the example we just did, x plus y cubed is x cubed plus 3 choose, that's 3 choose 3 times x cubed, 
plus 3 choose 2 times x squared y to the 1 plus uh, 3 choose 1 times x to the 1 y squared plus 3 choose 0 y cubed. And then what we just saw is that that's x cubed plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus y cubed. Uh, here's a proof. Uh, count the number of times that the term x to the r, y to the n minus r appears in the expansion. Uh, just like I said a minute ago, each of the n factors contributes an x or a y. We are counting how many ways there are to choose r copies of x and n minus r copies of y. Uh, so the, order, the factors cannot be repeated, right? Once a factor gives us an x or a y, we don't use it again. And the order of the x's and y's don't matter. Uh, so we're counting on ordered subsets without replacement. So there's exactly n choose r such terms. All right, let's do another example. We're going to expand and simplify the polynomial a minus 2b to the fifth power. And the binomial theorem says that this is going to be equal to the sum from 0 to 5, because 5 is n, 5 choose r times a to the 5 or sorry, a to the r, give me a while to select the eraser there, times negative 2b to the 5 minus r. The reason for negative 2b is if we're looking at this as x plus y to the fifth power, then x is a and y is negative 2b. All right, uh, so I'm gonna need to know what the five choose R's are. And rather than write down the formula for each one of those, I'm just gonna use the triangle. One, 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 two, one. Remember every number is the sum of the two above it. One, three, three, one. Three plus one is four. Three plus three is six. Three plus one is four. One, one. Four plus one is five. Four plus six is 10. Six plus four is 10. Four plus one is five. Uh, and then one at the end there. So the idea is that I can very quickly get the five choose R's. There are these numbers right here. And now I'm just going to write down the polynomial. It is a to the fifth power uh, plus five choose or times a to the four times negative two B plus 10 times a cubed times negative 2b squared plus 10 times a squared times negative 2b cubed plus 5 times a times negative 2b to the fourth power plus uh, negative 2b to the fifth power. All right, so that's the expanded binomial, but it also says to simplify. So we're going to do that as well. A to the fifth doesn't need any simplification. Uh, this next term is negative because it's five times negative two. So that's going to be minus 10 a to the four b. Uh, the next term is going to be positive because the negative two is being squared. So that's going to be plus 40. Two squared is four times 10 is 40 a cubed b squared. Uh, the next term will be negative. Two cubed is eight times 10 is 80 a squared b cubed. The next term will be positive. Uh, 16 times 5 is 80 again. a times b to the 4. And then minus 32b to the 5th.